Hi, I'm Tom Chick. We are in my dining room and I'm about to go over to the dining room table with you to show you a game I really like called Renegade. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. No, guys, cut, cut the music. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, folks of a certain age like me, they hear the name of this game and their mind goes there. I, I apologize. Uh, Re Renegade. Okay, stop, stop. I couldn't help it. Sorry. This game is a solitaire slash co-op game. It's pretty thinky. So if you're going to play it with other people, I would invite you to consider with whom you're playing it. Uh, it takes a, it's very mage nighty, by the way, which is no accident because the fellow who made it, his name is Richard Wilkins. Now you might not know that name, it's his first game, but if you watch board game playthroughs, and specifically playthroughs of solitaire games, you might have come across a fellow named Ricky Royal. That's what he calls himself online. That is the uh, nom de video of Richard Wilkins. Uh, Mr. Royal slash Wilkins has been playing solitaire games for a long time and commenting on them. He's very articulate about them. The dude also loves Mage Knight. Most people do. I'm the weirdo there. So it's not surprising that there's a lot of Mage Knight in Renegade. So if you're going to play this with your friends, make sure they're the types of friends with whom you would play Mage Knight. Now, Renegade... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every time I say the name, it's going to happen. Uh, this game is, you could describe it uh, as a dungeon crawler, a deck builder, a tactical combat game, a territory control game. There's a lot going on here. And there's also a lot of thought and design prowess in how the different elements thread together. So for me to unpack this game for you and to show you how it's played, and I want to play through a few games myself, today we're going to talk about three things. In the context of the game, I want to tell you about where we are, who we are, and what we're doing. So come over here to the dining room table uh, and let's talk about that. All right, the first thing to talk about is where we are. You know, speaking of where we are, uh, I forgot to mark the date. Hold on, come over here. Uh, it is April 18th, 2020. It's a Saturday. It's the weekend. Can't believe I forgot that. Okay, now, sorry, calendar elk. Now let's go over to the dining room table. Okay, where we are is the future. It is the year 20... And a dystopia has descended upon society which is now controlled by supermassive computers, or SMCs. Uh, let me show you what an SMC is. These are called servers. They are assembled at the beginning of the game somewhat randomly in that you deal one out at a time and then you connect it to another one. And by the time you have dealt all of them out, you have the network. So the supermassive computer lives on this network, on these individual servers, which are composed of partitions, all numbered one to six. These cards are used to tell you specifics about which supermassive computer you're using in any given game. Uh, this one right here, the RS20 simulator, this is just a tutorial. Don't think you're gonna be playing against this guy once you're actually playing for real. The number of skulls is the difficulty of that supermassive computer. And then the card is gonna give you rules on top about the setup and on the bottom about ongoing elements of how you, that supermassive computer interacts with the network and the player and the pieces on the board. Now, a supermassive computer isn't going to sit there and just let hackers come in and hack it. So each supermassive computer has, or SMC, countermeasures. Uh, the countermeasures are indicated at the very top by numbers in a copper, silver, and gold box. For instance, the RS-20 simulator has one copper, one silver, and one gold countermeasure card. There are different types of countermeasures. There are cards we're going to look at in a minute, and tokens on the board. 
These four right here, all the way up through the Viking, they only have one copper, one silver, and one gold countermeasure. When we get to Logie and Mother, they actually have two silver countermeasure cards. And then the text here are the special rules for how you set up that supermassive computer. Now, let's just pretend, you know what, this goes back in the box. Once you played the tutorial, this just shouldn't even be messed with. We're going to be playing against the Alpha Mobi SMC when we get to actual gameplay. So each of the countermeasure cards is randomly drawn from a deck of countermeasures. Here are the coppers, here are the silvers, and here are the golds. Without looking, you will only know the copper because it's on top of the deck. You take one from each pile and you create a countermeasure deck. And then that sits up here, and this tells you the rules that that SMC will use when you're playing a cycle. Now, what is a cycle? A cycle is each countermeasure card running its course. A cycle is furthermore, as I mentioned before, this is a deck builder. We are hackers, uh, and each hacker has a deck uh, of 15 cards. When you play, you're going to play three rounds, and each round you're going to deal yourself five of your cards. You will never have more or fewer than 15 cards in your deck. So you know that once your deck runs out of cards, you have run that, you've gone three rounds, and that cycle has run its course. So as for what then happens, is each countermeasure card has a goal on top of it. This is what you spent the cycle trying to do with your rounds, with your card play, with your deck. You flip this over and it instructs you what happens if you succeed or if you fail. And you then go to the next color countermeasure. Now one of the um, complaints, observations, facts about this game is that you don't it's a survival game. You win by lasting through all three, or in the case of Logie, your mother, four of the SMC's cycles. You're not uh, trying to get a certain victory condition. You can never win in the first cycle. The idea is that we are these hackers. They're technically called renegades. Right, they're, they're hackers, really. Uh, these hackers all appear on the network at their corresponding server, this yellow goes to this yellow, this blue goes to this blue, at the number six partition. That's what's called their access point. The game begins with the hackers having gained entry into the network on a specific server. From here, their job is to simply not let the countermeasures kick them out. And how does that happen? In addition to the countermeasures being a goal, which will provide a success and a fail result after each cycle, countermeasures consist of five guardians. These are uh, installations that will occur on certain partitions. And 25 sparks. And these are little round tokens. The game uses a lot of little round tokens. If there's ever a situation where the game tells you to place a guardian or a spark and you can't because they're already out there, that's how you lose uh, a game of Renegade. The way that you win is by simply surviving the gold countermeasure. You're setting up infrastructure, you're using the commands from your deck, from your cards, to uh, create a situation where you can hold back the viruses and the guardians. All you're trying to do is hold out, is survive, is last through all of the SMC's cycles. So that's where we are. The supermassive computer's network, its individual servers, and within each server, its individual partitions. Let me then show you what we are going to do as hackers to survive the countermeasures. This here is a character sheet for one of the hackers. Now, it looks really busy when you first see it. Don't let that dissuade you. Don't panic. This up here is simply a legend for all of the pieces and colors in the game. You can ignore this for now. These are the actions. Once you learn the actions, you're actually ready to play. And this is just a quick reference that you can consult for specifics of how those actions work. This down here is flavor text. 
This simply tells you, pretty straightforward, that tilde suite starts on the blue server, which is called Justice, on the number six partition, which is always the character's access point, is the number six partition. This is that character's special ability. By the way, each color has one character on each side. Each character has separate abilities. Now, each character also starts with a deck of, as I mentioned before, 15 cards. This deck will, will never be 14 cards. It will never be 16 cards. Always and only 15 cards. Now, this is a deck builder, so you'll be getting better cards to put in here. But a hard and fast rule is, anytime you take a card from what's called the hack shack, uh, you take a card out of your deck. You replace it. Part of the cost of getting a card from the Hack Shack, an improved card, is burning a card out of your deck. When you play around, you will draw five cards. So you will never have more or fewer cards than it takes to get through three rounds. And therefore, each cycle, which is a countermeasure card running its course, is going to be one play through your deck. Now, I want to show you the cards for each of these decks. Let me lay them out by color and value. Now, each of the cards in a deck has on it a command or multiple commands represented by an icon and a color. The heart of Renegade is the four colors of commands and what they do and how they interact with the board, with the supermassive computer, with the avatars, how you can manipulate and create and destroy pieces on the network. So I want to show you one color at a time what these are called and what they do. A red command, and they occur on the cards Renegade Apprentice, Infiltrate, and Sabotage. The Renegade Apprentice gives you one red command. Each command, the color has a name. A red command is called Destruction. So the Renegade Apprentice gives you one Destruction command. The Infiltrate gives you two Destruction commands. The Sabotage gives you one Destruction command, and these purple X's are wild. They're called leadership, but just think of them right now as wild. They can stand in for any other command. And the pieces on the board that these interact with are called viruses. Now the yellow cards give you a command called deception. Interrupt is a single deception, diversion is two deceptions, and trickery master is a deception and a leadership, which can be any other command. The pieces that are associated with the yellow commands are replicants. And by the way, these are called contaminants. The generic name for these round colored tokens is contaminant. The specific name in this case is virus. This is a replicant. The green commands are cognition. They interact with pieces called uplinks. The blue commands are information, and they interact with contaminants called data nodes. So each hacker has a deck of 15 cards that includes all 12 of these, as well as three additional cards that are based on that hacker's color. Naturally, Tilda Sweet, being a blue hacker, is going to get more blue cards. Furthermore, she gets a double green command, a focus card, because Part of the coloring system in this game is that each of these contaminants is double-sided. Uh, and whether or not red or yellow is on the other side gets at what is different about green and blue versus red and yellow. Red and yellow are deception and destruction. They are ways to directly fight against sparks. They're the more aggressive commands. Blue and green, called cognition and information, are more about manipulating the state of the board. The uplinks are used to move other contaminants and even sparks. They shuffle the bits and pieces around. The data nodes are used to move avatars around. They're basically roads. So that means that these are about movement and these are about removal, about destroying pieces and moving pieces around, manipulating the board. So that's the where we are, the who we are, and the what we are doing. We are inside of a supermassive computer. We are hackers who've gotten inside. And what we're doing is using our deck and the commands that come with those cards to survive the SMC's countermeasures.
Up next, I want to show you specifically what each of these commands does and how it interacts with the board, with the Sparks and the Guardians, and with our avatars. So up next, we're actually going to build a network. We're going to bring some of these pieces out, and I'm going to show you specifically how they work on the board. Join me for that next. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Oh, shoot a monkey. Ugh.